Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War Bat Out of Hell event in which the Sanguina is added to the game. So this thing is a yellow purple epic, so it ends up coming with uh, two arcane stones each. This is really good for stocking up on if you need it for anything. Uh, quite a few mythics use it, but as far as lower rarity stuff, you'd want to put it first into Herdmaster as well as then Faunessa. Faunessa, I believe this is actually the first time yellow purple has been available since she got buffed about a month, two months ago. But she does do a lot of uh, a big, large, a large HP gain to your entire team off of Empowered now. So that's a pretty cool change that she ended up getting that makes her uh, quite viable to actually go and fully trait. Other than that, later in the game, of course, Mythics and mainly Divine Ishbala as far as mid-range stuff. Really great Divine for uh, all various Divine teams. As far as this trip, though, not really that good. Its traits are uh, basically useless. And other than that, it's just a early game, maybe mid-game kind of uh, true damage trip. It steals life, so that means it ends up doing true damage and then gains that much life. So if it does something like 32 damage, it will do 32 true damage to the target, as well as gaining 32 life for itself. And has a boost ratio off of uh, 4 extra damage per purple on your team, any enemy team. So you could potentially have something like 20 additional damage if your entire team was purple and one of the enemies was purple, which would on average probably be about how much extra damage you would have if you were using her. Wouldn't really advise it though, because it is a 13 mana cost with absolutely no board control or anything like that, so you're better off just using pretty much any other uh, true damage option for the most part, as it is rather underwhelming uh, what it ends up doing, especially for an epic of all things. And it doesn't have any traits, make, traits making it even useful whatsoever, it doesn't have any links, it doesn't have anything whatsoever giving it any kind of bonus there. So overall, probably a troop that is not going to be that viable. However, this troop is required for one thing that was somewhat viable this week, and that is, as of today, it is now possible to get uh, Golvania to 10 plus stars, assuming you have Draculus and all the other requirements. And this is somewhat relevant, as that is one whole additional HP that you'll now have for absolutely everything other than Arena. So that's like the only relevant thing that she's really there for, and you'd basically just upgrade her simply for that uh, Kingdom upgrade. As far as the event stuff this week, we have ourselves 10% uh, to all undead, as well as 10% to all uh, mystics. I wouldn't really advise doing this, but if you use her on your PvP or Explore team, you would gain 40 souls per battle, though you'd be better off just doing soul farming or arena or anything else, as she's most likely going to slow down your team, and it just isn't worth it. Not to mention 40 souls in general is pretty low relative to actually soul farming. And other than that, all you have to do is kill a bunch of uh, yellow and PvP and explore really easy. That normally just takes two hours, especially if you just go to any explorer that has a high concentration of yellow. Just throw a quick uh, explore team, maybe the new one with uh, the uh, Sunbird or Leprechaun with Firebomb into the Mirage Queen with the elemental bonus that it ends up having. And uh, just any quick Sunbird and quick Rowan and any quick explorer or challenge team will be able to get that done. Or sorry, any quick explorer team, you could only do an explorer PvP, would end up getting it done at a very, very quick pace. As far as event keys this week, it is normally, or it's mostly not relevant. Uh, Golvania does not have anything that is particularly noteworthy other than the fact that you might want to get the troops upgraded in order to, of course, uh, get Golvania to 10 stars. Draculus is required for that. However, Draculus is also in the Soul Forge this week. So uh, you don't have to necessarily go for it off of event keys, but it is available there if you do want to try for it. Draculus as a troop is pretty underwhelming. Even Crimson Bat from the same kingdom is better than it and uh, you'd really only need it for the kingdom upgrade itself. So probably a week that you might want to skip out on event keys if you're not planning on 10-starring the uh, Golvania kingdom, or maybe just doing it just up to Crimson Bat and then stopping once you finally have your Crimson Bat. Um, Crimson Bat is slightly relevant just because of its high uh, damage potential that it has. Ends up having a potential four times uh, scroll damage against Divine teams, which might help against Rope Dart team, assuming this one can actually stay in first slot for it, or just in Divine teams in general, though non-Rope Dart Divine teams are pretty rare these days. But it does have that four time potential damage against them, and just an okay AoE uh, true damage going for it. But for the most part, Golvania is a pretty outdated kingdom as far as most of the uh, options are within it. Uh, of course, this week we have Tower of Doom. I'll be going over some teams and going over this on stream uh, quite extensively later on. However, one thing I do want to go over real quick is the Doom weapon itself. Compared to uh, some of the weapons we get, uh, not necessarily the greatest of things, but this one is pretty relevant for one really main reason. Well, one is its perks are pretty decent, but it gets to convert all yellow to purple. Or, I mean, sorry, all yellow to Doom Skulls. And this is pretty relevant because, of course, you can use this to counter Divine teams, like Rope Dart teams and anything else that might spam a lot of yellow off of Mercy or anything else like that. A really, really great yellow counter. There are not too many weapons that actually have a yellow counter, and of all of them, I believe this is now the strongest one. And it also has some pretty solid perks, besides what a Doom weapon normally already does. 
It has a uh, two mana steal from the first enemy, so it takes two mana from them and it gives it to you. It has a uh, bone storm that you can end up synergizing it with with other scroll spam options. And it gets to drain uh, two mana from each of the purple enemies. So it could potentially be pretty decent. There are a lot of yellow divine teams that oddly enough do run like one or two purple because the bunny is purple and normally divine and Shpala, obviously if you're going to run that into divine is also purple. So most divine teams do run at minimum uh, two purple on them and you could use this to uh, try to counter that out. You can even first turn drain them. So if you had like something like that bunny on the opposing team, you could simply go and get your uh, scythe up on turn one, hopefully off an explosion or something, and then simply drain the bunny before it even gets to uh, do anything. So there's a lot of potential with this weapon. I haven't really messed with any teams personally. I will be going over that probably on stream and throughout the week, but it's highly, highly advised to consider maxing out this weapon or at least consider getting it upgraded some. Between the two events, if you did not use your scrolls from the previous uh, purple Doom events from several months back, um, you should most likely have enough scrolls this time around to be able to get it max. It is pretty pricey to do though, regardless. But uh, if you can reach it, it is a pretty solid weapon. Uh, probably even top 20 as far as how good it currently is, uh, at, the, at least countering the uh, meta at the current moment in time, if nothing else. So uh, really, really great weapon to get. And if you don't happen to get it with gems, though, I would advise getting it by get, buying up to tier 4 in the event. You can also get it through the uh, Soul Forge. And speaking of that, let's go through the event thingies that we have this week. So tomorrow we have the... Oh gosh, I actually forget the name of that faction now. <laughs> that is a fail. That is the... Um previous one that we just had not that one but the um the silver necropolis the one that i always keep mispronouncing which is why i forgot it but there's silver necropolis we have the wednesday just for the uh, little bit of that infernus pet thing we have thursday for the uh, death knights as far as death knight is from golvania so if you have any golvania troops or if you still want to try getting draculas you can offer those packs uh though you don't really need anything too strong all you really need is mang into banshee or dawnbringer into banshee for the earlier battles anything like that is going to be perfectly fine you just run uh uh, main triple banshee and that alone is enough to solo all of them or if you're just doing the quick battles you run dawnbringer triple banshee and that will get you through all the free battles uh very quickly uh this friday does have bounty hunter however do keep in mind i will not be around for the bounty hunter if i have time that morning i'll try to go over it uh briefly but you know bounty hunter same thing as always it doesn't normally change much as far as how the meta is concerned for uh, bounty hunter just a sing just a single troop really gets changed out every single time so not much of a difference there but uh, do keep in mind, it's Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I will not be around. I'll hopefully have some videos pre-recorded. But um, yeah, Bounty Hunter this Friday. And that will, of course, be lasting for the entire uh, weekend event. And other than that, Soul Forge. So, Soul Forge stuff. We have a couple things worth crafting. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, we do have Draculus around. Uh, Draculus is a okay mythic. It's not really that good. It just gets to steal a bunch of life from all enemies. Those get to get pretty tanky from that. However, from an offensive perspective, it is pretty bad. Even Crimson Bat is better offensive than this thing is and it just tends to be way too slow and way too low damage to really use more often than not however it is now required to get Golvania to 10 plus stars for one whole additional hp so for that purpose you might consider getting it if you already have a lot of the other core mythics though it's definitely nowhere's within priority it's mainly one of those things that you get just for simply the kingdom upgrade other than that uh while i wouldn't really advise it uh, there is if you truly needed it Sylvania mora Sylvania mora is a pretty decent uh entangle uh, one of the best entangles in the entire game it is a legendary not a mythic but uh if you are having some struggles with things like delves any of them that happen to use brown or green uh Sylvania Moore and last thought tends to be pretty good as one of the big th biggest things that you tend to die from in delves is skulls and this will be a really good counter to that since you can just constantly keep entangling them other than that the only other relevant thing that we really have this week if you might want to consider getting it is Ella McGrim again not really one of those that is super high priority but it is good for two things uh, purple guild war and purple delves uh this is only for like the lower to mid-range delves but if you did want to get it pretty good for those especially if you have fully traded in furnace because it does need burn in order to get uh its loop going a little bit better if every single thing on the opposing team is burned that is 12 purple per cast and that's a pretty high chance that it would hit an extra turn into a decent amount of damage and also gets to have a pretty high uh attack reduction onto the enemy and it's also overall one of the better impervious troops within the game so it uh, has uh, quite a few things going for it. Still one of the more mid-range mythics because it's only, again, really used for two things. It's used for uh, Purple Guild War Day, which is the main thing it's used for, and it can also be used for early to mid-range Tower of Doom for Purple, uh, which is it currently is right now. So uh, could potentially have some usefulness in that regard. But those are the only things as far as Soul Forge that you'd really want to uh, go out for as of uh, currently. Other than that, I uh, just wanted to show a few teams, not actually using any, but just for the Tower of Doom, of course, if you are wondering what to use. 
Here are a few of them. Uh, more of a mid-range one. We have Mountain Crusher, Elema Grim, and Furnace and Possessed King for the infinite Elema Grim loop. Uh, the burn in order to get it going. Uh, then we just keep spamming the purple, keep getting our attack reduction and the explosions off of the Possessed King in order to keep our mana going. And uh, do keep in mind, your weapon does not have to be purple. It can be any color in the game. Uh, you are allowed to use any color hero weapon in Tower of Doom. So you can use something like a Mountain Crusher there to tank with. If you have absolutely no Mythics, uh, there are a few different ways that you can do this. Um, you can go with uh, basically a, a team completely centered around Mang. I should end up showing a cheaper team than this uh, last time around, I believe, like with Herdmaster and with Azurus instead of Fist of Zorn. But uh, I figured I'd show this just because we do have Fist of Zorn now. So that does change up slightly the kind of teams that you could do for a mid-range or cheaper team. But uh, basically, if you have absolutely no options for this Tower of Doom, you're most likely just going to want to run an entire team centered around Mang into Titan and uh, just have it set to Barrier Every Brown. Use Leprechaun in order to accumulate all the mana that you need off of Empowered into a gigantic explosion. And there's a few other options that you can do here. You can use Herdmaster for the cleanse. You can use Divine Ishbala. Uh, if you do use Divine Ishbala, the Fist of Zorn Divine Ishbala is probably one of the better, slightly cheaper options that you have. Her trait stones are available this week, so you can fully trade her. It has a transform red to skulls and then uh, transform all green to uh, yellow. And off that green to yellow, you can then use Fist of Zorn to convert all yellow to skulls and then basically just repeat the board and get it all rolling again. And uh, this also has Empowered, so you'll have two different uh, Empowered options that you'll be able to use. And of course, the whole premise is mainly just mang them a few times and then just destroy them off of one-shot skulls or skulls that hit them down in very minimal hits. And that is basically everything that we would need to uh, do with that. And of course, if you're going to be farming just the standard event, you just go to any single kingdom that has a uh, lot of yellow in it. Uh, it can really be wherever you just want to go for trait stones. Uh, the White Helmet stuff does have a pretty decent amount. And just run it with any standard quick team. Um, personally, I'm running it with the uh, most recent option that we got, Mirage Queen, which you can easily get just by throwing a few thousand shards or less at the new faction, if you don't already have it already from the previous faction event. And uh, we can simply just do this into a explosion, get that rolling, and then the Sunbird kill it, and keep repeating that until... Oh, it didn't actually get the kill there. But uh, we'll get another little poke on it, and hopefully that'll kill both of them out. And there we go. And just keep repeating that and just keep getting a lot of yellow gems off of that. And as you can see, we get another two simply by doing that one battle. Anyways, guys, that'll wrap it up for this video. If you still have any other questions, please feel free to uh, leave them below. As I mentioned, I will be gone later this week, so there will be no stream on Friday, Saturday, nor Sunday. I'll try to have some video content out so you guys have something to watch, though. But if you guys have any suggestions for videos to cover, feel free to uh, mention them. I already have a few that I'll probably be uh, doing, but if you guys have any other suggestions for... Uh, what for me to pre-record to cover during that time feel free to uh, leave them below and i will catch all of you later hope you all have a wonderful week goodbye everyone